All right, so um, my name is Laura Juckham. I'm the VP of Scientific Operations at Miris Bio. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about next generation virus production, virus gen GMP. And so many of you may have not have heard about Miris. Um, we have a dedication to science and scientists. So we were founded in 1995 out of the University of Wisconsin-Madison, John Wolf's lab, and we really started out as a small gene therapy and research products company. What's different about Miris is we have novel lipid and polymer transfection formulations that allow for improved efficiency and reduced cytotoxicity. So we're really committed to finding the optimal transfection formulations and strategies for cellular biology applications. And this includes virus production, CRISPR-Cas, and antibody protein production, among others. We also have a technical support team of R&D and application scientists to help you with your transient transfections. Earlier this year, Miris also became part of the Gamma Biosciences team, where they're enabling innovation um, through end-to-end -end workflow. And so they're advancing both gene and cell therapies, vaccines, and biologics. So we're all here today really um, based on the promise of cell and gene therapies. And so the first wave of gene therapy success drives the need for further manufacturing improvements for the second wave. So in this schematic along the y-axis, we're looking at the market manufacturing demand. And the, the x-axis is a loose timeline, and you can see the, the first successes with Luxterna and Zilgensma are really you know, driving that first wave market demand. And so it's, it's a relatively low number of assets. Um, the average dose is you know, 10 to the 12th viral genomes per patient. And the addressable patient population is relatively small for those rare diseases. Now, as we move towards the second wave of manufacturing, that demand for a recombinant virus is going to go up 100 to 1,000 fold. That's because the number of assets is going to go up. The average dose is going to go up as we target more systemic diseases, and really the addressable patient population is going to expand. And so if we first look at the bottom and the first wave market demand, um, adherent culture had been sufficient for most of this demand, especially when you look at the Icelis or HyperStack platforms. Um, moderate process yields were tolerated um, because the demand was relatively low. And high cost processes were also tolerated because we needed that initial success in order to push the demand for the second wave. As we think about the second wave, um, really the focus needs to be on suspension culture at high capacity to meet this demand. We need high process yield in those suspension cells to enable cost effective manufacturing. And we really need some low cost processes to keep down the cost of goods. So the viral titer requirements for gene and cell therapies are very different. Uh, gene therapy dosages vary from 10 to the 11th to 10 to the 16th viral particles per patient, um, whereas cell therapy doses are much lower because most of the time you're treating those cells ex vivo and it's around 10 to the 8th or 10 to the 10th viral particles per patient. So transient transfection is a key step in recombinant AAV and lentivirus production. Uh, these are two cartoons of both AAV and lentivirus. And triple transfection to date is the most widely used and reproducible method for um, production of these viruses. And you can see that transfection is the key first step in these processes. To address this potential bottleneck, we developed the transit virus gen transfection reagent. So it's been designed for lentivirus and AAV production. It gives you superior performance, cell line and platform flexibility, batch to batch reliability. It comes in three grades, which we'll go into more detail. And it's also worry free. So there's no commercial license required. It's chemically defined and animal origin free. So transit virus gen supports all phases um, in the therapeutic pipeline. In November of 2017, we launched the research and development version of transit virus gen, which is available um, in a small vial format. 
In June of 2019, we launched a product, a mid-grade product called Transit Virusgen Select, which addresses the preclinical and early phase clinical trials. This has additional quality release testing for sterility, um, endotoxin, mycoplasma, and identity, and is sold in a 30 mil and 150 mil bottle format. And just this year, we launched uh, Transit Virusgen GMP. So this is able to support late phase clinical trials and commercial manufacturing. And as it's named, it's manufactured according to good manufacturing practices and is sold in 150 mil bottle format. Alongside the development and the uh, manufacture of the virus gen, transit virus gen GMP reagent, at Miris, we also developed virus-specific kits that include the transfection reagent, complex formation solution, and enhancer. So the transit virus gen transfection reagent can be used as a standalone product, or it can be combined with these specific solutions. So these enhancers and complex formation solutions were developed at Miris for suspension cell transfection, and they boast recombinant virus titers two to tenfold over using the reagent alone. So when you think about next generation uh, recombinant virus production, you know, I want you to think about how you know, MIRS fits into that. And so when we think about that, we think of three um, key points. And the first is performance, how high of titers can you achieve? The second is quality, and you know, we can supply you with a GMP compliant reagent to take you all the way through commercial manufacturing. And the third is support. So we have a team of R&D and application scientists that can help you integrate this into your process. So Transit Virusgen works across platforms. So it works for both AAV, it works for lentivirus, it works for suspension, and it works for adherent cells. So since we're talking about you know, addressing that second wave manufacture, I'm gonna first start with showing you some data on AAV and suspension cells. So what we're looking at in this graph is um, recombinant AAV2 production in XB293 cells via transient transfection. Along the y-axis, we're looking at functional titers, so total infectious virus. And along the um, y-axis, we're looking at different transfection reagents, so transit virusins in black and two competing GMP transfection reagents, A and B. And so if you look, um, compared to reagent A, you're seeing a 12-fold increase in um, virus titers. Compared to B, you're seeing a four-fold increase. Now if you add in our enhancer and complex formation solutions, you can boost those titers from the gate about two-fold. We consistently see a two to three-fold increase in titers, which can be further delineated to a 24-fold or eight-fold increase in your AAV titers. When we think about suspension lentivirus production, um, it's, a, it's a pretty similar story. Um, so this is lentivirus made in suspension, um, the viral production cells from Thermo using grown in LVMAX media, using third generation p vectors from Aldebaran. And once again, we're looking at functional lentivirus titer um, with different transfection reagents to produce the lentivirus head to head. And so when you compare transit virus gen alone to GMP competing reagent A, it's about a two-hold enhancement. If you add in our enhancers and complex formation solution, that enhancement grows to about nine-fold. So how can virus gen GMP products fit into your process? So we're compatible with multiple cell types and culture media formulations. So this is um, some data showing AAV2 production in along the x-axis. You can see XB cells grown in XB media, viral production cells grown in LV max media, or those viral production cells adapted to different serum-free growth media, such as Freestyle F17, XB293, or Irvine Balance CD media. And if you look at the, the light bars, that's transit virus gen alone, and the reddish bars are with our enhancer. And so you can see across many different cell types and media formulations, you can achieve high titers. And so we see similar trends with suspension lentivirus production. I just don't have time to go through all the data. Virusgen also has an ample complex formation time window. Um, so the graph on the left um, starts at 15 minutes, but we actually recommend a 30 to 
plus minute window of complex formation. And so you can see with the solid line bars, you have a window of between 30 and at least 120 minutes. Um, and then the dashed line it represents the reagent alone. So the solid line is the reagent plus enhancer, the dashed line is reagent alone. So you can see they, they trend in parallel as expected. And this is independent of the cell temperature that, or the temperature that you're incubating the complexes at. You can do it at room temperature, the graph on the right with the solid line, or um, at four degrees with the dashed line. And so per our standard protocol, transfection complexes are typically made in 10% of the culture volume. Um, you can lower that to 5%. We just recommend that you look at the complex formation time because it might need to be a little bit shorter. So scientific support is also uh, available during your process optimization. That's something that we pride ourselves on. So this is an example of scaling considerations for a complexation for a 200 liter run. Um, so we'll walk you through kind of how to combine your DNA and the complex formation solution, how to combine the complex formation solution and the reagent, how to mix that and incubate it, you know, post mixing and then add it to your stirred tank reactor. And here's um, just one final piece of data, just looking at um, titers, both functional titers on the left side of the x-axis and genome copies on the right side. And this is from a one liter um, shake flask. And you can see that the functional titers in red and the genome copies in black trend together. Um, so that's what we commonly see. And once again, we're seeing with virusgen alone versus virusgen plus enhancer about a two-fold boost. And that's, you know, a multi-fold increase over GMP computing reagents A and B. So you might ask, why do high titers matter? Well, high titers lead to, to cost savings. So it's estimated that a 2,000 liter GMP AAV production run costs between one and two million dollars. So labor, facility, consumables are all significant parts of that cost. So higher virus titers will lead to more patient doses and a lower cost of goods. So in summary, significant process improvements are necessary to meet the manufacturing demands of the second wave of gene therapy assets. And transient transfection is a key step that we can help overcome this bottleneck. So transit virus gen GMP reagents and kits offer efficient DNA delivery for high titer, AAV, and lentivirus generation. We offer workflows for both adherent and suspension cells. You get support from MIRAS R&D and application scientists, and there's worry-free options. So it's GMP compliant, no license is required, it's completely synthetic and animal origin free. So I invite you to, to prove it to yourself um, and request an evaluation kit today. So thank you. I have uh, a minute or two for questions, if there's any questions from the audience. All right, well, thank you for your attention.